I'm going to start with an image taken from o Olamana's um, site, the small page he did, mostly because he did a really good job of explaining what his difficulty was. There are a lot of sites on the internet that explain that people, when given a choice, generally choose a golden rectangle. And Wink is the impression, one of the reasons why a person should use the golden ratio is because it's a beauty contest and uh, it's beautiful intrinsically. And for the purposes of composition, that's not really very useful. Because if we're really going to compare these two things, we always compare them to the frame. So maybe instead of looking at both of them in the same frame together, we would look at two frames and see which do we like better. The more accurate comparison is between the golden mean rectangles on the left and the work done on the right where everything is organized according to the overall size of the frame. And which do you think looks more unified and more balanced, more golden? But that isn't at all a fair to Olama because he really did a very nice composition here and there's a lot of structure and there is a lot of self-similarity. What he sees consciously is the rectangle up above, but what I see when I look at it is the rectangle down below, something very different. Uh, it's an object that has multiple self-similarities. You can see, in fact, there are more self-similarities even than that. The, the, the spaces around it can be broken down even more. And you can see that those shapes are repeated yet again. And uh, it's a very nice shape. And this is why, this effect is why when you move a square around on a piece of paper, you feel something change. You don't consciously see all those rectangles being formed, but they're formed nonetheless. And that is the heart of composition. It has nothing to do with a beauty contest between squares. It has to do with making objects that feel like unified holes. This begs the question, why in the heck does a frame need to be a unified whole? Well, I think, although I have no proof of it, it's a hunch, it's uh, my intuition, that it has to do with the way objects, when we look out and see the world, all have an internal structure to them. Olama talked about how he looked around and he didn't see everything in his world made up of golden rectangles. If he did, in fact, it would be impossible for you to tell objects apart. How we tell objects apart is by their structure. We humans have a hard time looking at two things at the same time. I'll try to illustrate it with this illusion. You can see the young woman. You can see the old hack. But it's, it's, you can go back and forth very quickly, but you can't see the two at the same time. And when we make a picture or a sculpture or any work of art, what we're trying to do is get people to focus their attention. And to do so, we have to make that picture feel like one object. It's those so similar structures that make a picture seem like a singular whole or Sometimes that unity will be able to see, like in this example from an African fractal, if you remember from uh, the lecture on African fractals. But most of the time, it's not so easy. Most of the time, that structure, those self-similar shapes, are hidden in the white space, in the areas that we ignore. But when they're put together properly, the work feels like a whole. Okay, it isn't a beauty contest. It isn't because everything in the world is a golden rectangle. So why in the world would we want to use a golden rectangle? After all, the rule of threes works and it's much simpler. Well, it works, but it's kind of limited. You basically have one choice, the rule of threes. But what if you want to do something a little bit more complicated or surprising? What do you do then? 
just for discussion's sake, we're going to pretend that we have a true golden rectangle. I mean, almost all the sides. Let's, let's put a square there. And now I'm going to do something a tiny bit different um, because this is a way graphically to produce these so that you don't have to keep making calculations every time, which is kind of nice. Actually, there are a lot of things about the, the golden rectangle and golden ratios that are pretty easy to do with your hands and not so easy to do with calculations. So I'm going to start by putting um, E old um, diagonal line. And now I'm going to put another diagonal line, but I'm not going to use the whole image. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the part. What that will give me is the reciprocal, as it's called. And actually, it, this can be calculated mathematically, but we're going to leave that, we're going to leave that alone for the moment. Uh, lo and behold, add another square. Where do we get? We get now another square plus a, a uh, another golden rectangle. And then we add another square. And you can see how I'm using these lines in the same way I was using the lines before in order to get uh, my, my new um, proportional lines but in a very different way. You have this one and it's always amazing to be do this yourself and hold down the control key so you know you're getting a square. One of the strange aspects of the human eye is that we don't actually see squares as squares. True squares tend to look uh, a little tall because um, of some distortions in our vision processing. But uh, do the experiment, see that they're square. I've done this many times and it always has to be reproved to myself. Let's see if we can come in and gradually. This gets quite interesting and we're going to stop there. But the assumption is we can go on forever. And most of the images I've seen everyone working on here um, have really centered on their idea of the spiral here. And the spiral is interesting. And you will find the spiral. That shape didn't really tell us anything but the shape. Now, when we do this, it tells us something else. It tells us something about proportion. Because you see, I can take these, I can pull these out, and we can look at them. All right. And you'll notice, I'm just going to kind of place them here in a loose kind of line. How no longer do we have for our squares just some random squares? No, those squares relate to each other. I'm just going to put them this way so, so we can see a little bit better how that works in a proportional relationship. And that proportional relationship, now if we put in a square, say, I'll just make a square, a random square, here, and hold down the shift key. Now this square just doesn't seem to belong, or we can see how it wouldn't belong as well as these that are all related by proportion as well as by shape. So I'm going to get rid of this, this blue guy because he's, uh, he's coming up the works here. We can see how all these squares create a notion, a very dynamic notion of growth. And between any two of them, we get a sense of what happens when we move up and down this chain. And this is the amazing thing in the Nautilus shell. In each chamber, we're seeing this growth happen. And what it's capturing is that proportional relationship spiraling out. It doesn't have to spiral, but it's the proportion that we're really looking for that really makes this relationship so amazing. So uh, let's stop here and really think for a moment. It's about proportion to one part to the other, not necessarily just shape.